Now once again I'm borrowing from another channel and when I borrow from other channels I do not wish any disrespect towards anyone and I'd like to fully acknowledge that at one time I was very much involved in the hoax lie system and indeed I was very interested in U-boats. So we're going to talk about U-505. 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 So we'll join these adventurers who traveled to Chicago to see you, 505. The event was held after hours in the U-505 submarine exhibit. This was the first time that they had done something like this, and so we wanted to take advantage of oh, it because damn. we're history buffs, and the museum happens to be one of my favorites. Uh, it's a great museum for kids and adults of all ages, and we go there on a fairly regular basis whenever we can get to Chicago. When you're in Chicago, a lot of people talk about going to different museums and things that are available there, but the Museum of Science and Industry is sometimes ignored by people because it's sort of off by itself, away from the other museums. But Jessica mentioned it's one of her favorites, it's one of my favorites. Um, there's just a lot of things to see and do there, and one of the, the best exhibits I think they have is the U-505 submarine. So for those who don't know, the U-505 was a Nazi submarine that was captured by the U.S. Navy during World War II. And it was a huge capture for us because we were able not only to get the technology of the submarine and learn about that that they were using uh, for submarine warfare, but also the Enigma coding machines that the Germans were using. Uh, we finally had our hands on some of those and were able to start decoding some of the messages that the Nazis were using as part of their wartime plans. Yeah, and they had a really cool full exhibit that goes along with it. So. Back in 2004, I... There's your noose papers. Remember, they put a noose around your neck. All right? Propaganda. Lies in print. The purpose of print media is to get you to agree with what is written. Very rarely does anyone question or disagree with headlines. In other words, it lines your head and gets into your head. That's why they're called headlines. Uh, they finally moved the submarine inside. It had sat outside at the Chicago Museum for years and years and years. Now, actually, many, many years ago, I was there when it was outside uh, I say many, many years ago, and more recently, uh, my son visited the, the exhibit and knew that I was a U505 fan. So just to prove to you that indeed I, ha I was a part of the hoax lie system, you can see I've got my U505 mug. Get your war souvenirs. Here, yeah. I was part of this system. So please, when I do videos, I try not to belittle anyone who is involved in it because I myself was highly involved in it. In fact, U boats was one of my great interests. But they didn't really have a full exhibit to go with it. So back in the early 2000s, they dug a big pit next to the museum, between the museum and Lake Michigan. They, you know, special equipment lowered the sub down into the pit and then built up around it. One of the cool so probably they should have just put concrete on it and buried it and said, it's a done issue. It's a done issue. 
because it was a hoax too. Like all the exhibits. And when you go into a museum, you're supposed to muse or think. Think on these things. Meditate on them. Get them into your head to muse. Now when you go into an amusement park, a amusement park, you are to negate thinking. In other words, don't do any thinking, just have fun. Amusement or amusement. So I want to take you back now to the kind of development of the crew of U-505 because they will go from launching torpedoes to hitting baseballs. That's right, fielding baseballs and then later picking cotton. <laughs> so I'm going to borrow another video and this video is about Camp Ralston in Louisiana and it's going to sort of begin with when the prisoners were shown a certain type of movie that's a whole nother segment for filming <laughs> video making videos and I've made a few but one must approach this carefully all right but that's not the subject I'm interested in we're interested in U-505 and what happens to them. But I'm borrowing this video. Staring in disbelief that their government would commit such atrocities. It was one thing to kill in battle, another to be a murderer. Huh. The story of Camp Ruston is intertwined with mystery and military secrets. One of the most closely guarded secrets of World War II was the capture of U-505. The U-505 was captured off the west coast of Africa on June 4, 1944, by the U.S. Navy. Led by the USS Guadalcanal, American warships launched an intensive depth charge attack that forced the U-505 to surface. As the U-boat surfaced, American destroyers and aircraft raked it with machine gun fire. One U-505 sailor... So none of this makes any sense because if they're lacing at the machine gun fire and how in the H are all these crew members going to get out safely? <laughs> the story is pretty incredible and I'll add a little detail they don't discuss. And several wounded. The captain gave the order to abandon U-505 and to scuttle her to prevent the U-boat's capture. So they're going to blow the boat, right? But they're going to abandon the boat. Which is it? Come on now, you're in this hunk of iron that they call iron coffin. And the captain says, abandon the boat, but scuttle the boat. And there's machine gun fire everywhere? Oh, come on. It's a hoax. Yes, they actually pulled in a coat German U-boat, but it was built for the hoax. <laughs> Only the very front of the boat and the top of the conning tower was still above the water. Abort oh, okay, so now they're supposed to abandon boat and there's just a wee bit of the boat above the water. Come on! But they're supposed to scuttle it, which means you're supposed to blow it to smithereens. See, it's nonsense closed in before the U-505 could slide below the surface. In a feat of expert seamanship by a... Now, so they're supposedly they're, 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 they're going to surrender and they're going to get out of there, but now they talk about it submerging. Now, this expert crew or expert seamanship, who later say they're a bunch of teenagers, now they don't fill this detail in, but I remember reading it, Supposedly they had demolition experts that went in there and disarmed the bombs. Where are all the Germans? Are they floating in water? Is the boat up? Is it down? You see how 
if you just stop and start breaking down the story, you will see that you've been lied to. Now it's a nice, it's a good lie. It's, a, I mean, it's a lie in the favor of us, U.S. Notice how when the gentleman and his wife were talking story, we talked about us, you know, our side versus their side. And that's what they want you to think. But the truth of the matter is, they were all on the same side of creating fiction. teenagers, the U-505 was rescued from a watery grave. The submarine became the first... Well, how did it get rescued? We heard that it was going to be diving. We heard it was going to be scuttled. And how in the blue blazes are all these 53 or 52 German U-boat crew members getting off of the thing? Remember, they're shooting machine guns everywhere at it. U-505. You! Y-O-U! You! You! 505. U stands for the German word Unterseebutten. But I'm going to make it stand for you. You're getting a 505, which is a 10 to your head. captured on the high seas by the U.S. Navy since 1815. Fifty-eight prisoners had been taken from the water during the action. One man had been killed and three wounded, including the 505's commanding officer. So three seconds ago, they were firing machine guns everywhere at it. And now, they're like daddy getting babies floating in the water. Come on. What is it? Supposedly that's a picture. Look how nice their uniforms are. Do you see any mud or muck on them? Look how white the bandages are. How did they bandage this guy so quickly? On the U-boat. He's just floating in the water. And look, he's got bandages on him that aren't soaked and they're as white as can be. When did they do that? When? boat was secretly hidden in Bermuda and the crew was interrogated in Norfolk Virginia where they received black POW uniforms later they were taken under heavy security to a railroad train the windows were nailed shut during the two-day trip to Ruston so wait till you find out who was the heavy security team they were heavy hitters in the baseball lineup They were used to working with the enemy, the opposing baseball team. The guards on the trip were unique. A U.S. Navy baseball team was pressed into service to guard the prisoners. Learning the story of my father's involvement with Camp Rustin really changed my life forever. They got the wrong thing. If they wanted to guard the prisoners, they should have got basketball players, not baseball players. Baseball players don't really guard much. They might guard the base. Uh, if anybody's going to steal second base, they might try to guard the base, but they should have got basketball players. Um, he was a baseball prodigy. In 1940, he was recruited and signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers at, at 15 years old. Uh, sent off to uh, one of their feeder system farm teams and uh, to be developed. Uh, he was moving up, developing nicely. But in 1941, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor, it changed his life along with the uh, lives of the entire nation. He was placed on a touring baseball team, similar to what the USO would be today. It was sent to North Africa, playing on the United States Navy North Africa touring baseball team. He spent most of the war there playing with his teammates. It wasn't really like being in the Navy as such. He was there to play baseball. But as the war started moving on to the European continent and away from North Africa, they sent the baseball team home. Uh, they didn't know what to do with them. They had thought about sending them back to basic training because they really never had basic training. And one night, in the middle of the night, while in Norfolk, Virginia, 
They're away from the sleep by the shore patrol. So they never had basic training. But they had a lot of ball practice, fielding grounders and fly balls. They had a lot of hitting practice. They had a lot of throwing practice from pitcher to catcher. From, fro from th throwing the ball in deep outfield down to the bases. Lots of practice like that. But not with their guns in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But the shore patrol. Ah, they know who to get to guard some of the most secretive prisoners in June of 1944. You get the baseball team, right? Take it to a Quonset hut where they're forced to sign some documents swearing them to secrecy. Once the documents were signed, they were told that the United States Navy had captured a German U-boat. That the prisoners were being held there at Norfolk, Virginia for processing and that they were going to be transferred to a remote camp in northern Louisiana and the United States Navy baseball. Now who knows, for all we know, the U-boat could have been built in Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> I'm just speculating. Why bother? But you can make the story up that it was captured in North Africa. And the real secretive people were the people that built it in Norfolk, Virginia. Now I don't know for sure, but I'm just showing you how you can be a hoax liar so easily. And this baseball feature really adds to the story like, come on, you got a bunch of ball players? that are going to guard these German, so these German uh, marine soldiers from the U-boat. Nobody else is going to do it except the ball players now. Should have got basketball players. In charge of guarding. After a while they became bored and just watching the prisoners watch them. And my father got the idea. Yeah. They just watched each other. <laughs> well, but here's the most brilliant idea of all about World War II prisoners. Especially ones that are firing torpedoes. Especially ones that have access to the Enigma code. This is the best plan of all. Maybe they should be let out of the pen and play baseball. Yeah, you know, he talks to play baseball. Well, that's a recreation there, it's not an actual film. Probably some masons don't know what to do with themselves. And they say, you want to go out and pretend like you're German soldiers? Learning to play baseball? This simple trick lets you escape right, a sinking car in this. seconds. It a happens. lethal design flaw in all re- The 505 crew slipped into Camp Ruston sometime in July 1944. The sailors had no clue where they were and no idea they were so far from the sea. Employees and guards at the camp were sworn to secrecy and couldn't tell anyone about their presence. Are the nurses or no? Oh, you don't use to forget. Now, there's something you need to know about POW camps. And on my channel, War Backwards is Raw, I went to one uh, in Iowa and looked at it the museum that that they had of all the artifacts and stuff. <laughs> and some of those films I did were quite interesting. Especially the one about the car when I start talking to the inhabitants of a car. But you can find them on War Backwards is Raw. Now here's the thing. At the start of this documentary historical thing about Camp Rouston, Ralston in Louisiana. 
I believe they mentioned that POW camps were set up in about 46 of the 48 states. Now remember it's 1940s so you don't have Hawaii and Alaska yet. So why is it so important to set up these POW camps in almost every state in the United States? And I'm going to tell you why. Because they were stages where they conducted plays and the guard towers around them. Yes, they were guarded all right. But they were guarded so no one comes into them to look around and see there's nothing going on. So these actors will pretend like all kinds of things are going on in these POW camps. The very people, they are sworn to secrecy with the punishment of a court martial and execution. If anybody ever would one, let one word out that the whole submarine crew was here. And now, the, probably they were sworn to secrecy that you better never tell anybody that basically we built a big prop pretending there's hundreds and thousands of German POWs in these camps. There's no need for them. <laughs> Being the trustee of the captain, I could walk outside the fence and never knew that there was a submarine crew here. There was good reason for the secrecy. Although the seizure of an enemy vessel was a major accomplishment, the true value in the capture of the U-505 lay in the discovery of an Enigma code machine and codes used by the German Navy to communicate. Now basically, if the Enigma machine was valid, which it probably was, it was used to communicate from German to United States, from United States to Russia, Russia to German, German to Russia. In other words, they were all in on it together to create a fantasy war for you, for me, and the world. A lot of people, have, not a lot, but a few people have asked me to cover the war, in, the war in Ukraine. It's the same stuff. It's just films with actors and nonsense stories like a captured U-boat that's being bombarded with depth charges and then surfaces and being bombarded with machine guns and then the captain tells it to scuttle the boat but yet evacuate the boat but yet the boat dives what is it? well it doesn't matter because it was all stage and prop and propaganda. He knew the U-505 had been captured, the codes would be changed. When the International Red Cross visited Camp Ruston, it was refused admittance into the U-505 compound. On at least three occasions, the Red Cross inspectors were turned away from the sailors' compound. That's to make the story more dramatic. When the inspectors go in, they see nothing. Nothing, because the camps were built as a show, a prop, a stage. That's why they were in almost every state in the United States. So every state had a prop, had a stage. You could say, oh, we've got German soldiers interred in the United States because we captured them on the high seas or in Africa or in Europe. Well, POW camps are basically a hoax too. 
Eventually, there would be less time for soccer and baseball for the U-505 as the end of the war drew near and <laughs> the need for secrecy faded. The sailors were assigned to work crews around Ruston, sawing timber and picking cotton like the other POWs. Get out there and pick some cotton with your cotton-picking hands. Who cares if you fired torpedoes? <laughs> so it's about you. And once again, I would like to confess that I was a U-505 fan myself. So no disrespect is intended toward anyone, anyone, anyone who is caught in the hoax lie system. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and a video.